Um, grace, grace, you good people over the world. Um, we want to continue with yesterday's um, bread. Captivity is taken captive. And we want to look at it on, um, in a different dimension because today it is part two today. Captivity taken captive. But from Revelation chapter 3, verses 2, okay, the NKJV, the Bible says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. That's a warning to the church that claims to be alive. And yet Christ sees them as a dead church. Are you understanding? There are people who claim to be so alive, but they are dead. And God is saying, strengthen those things which remain, those things which are about to die. Otherwise, you won't experience the victory that God has given you over death. Captivity is taken captive. So, in as much as death offers vain resistance, as we learned in yesterday's bread, it's wisdom for you and me to be watchful and strengthen the things that are ready to die within our spheres of influence. It could be a relationship. It could be marriage. It could be a ministry. It could be that job. It could be your business or your career. And you've got to learn to give to it, especially relationships. Working so hard and you're affecting your marriage. Working so hard and you're leaving your children rejected because you don't have time for them. Those are the things that I'm talking about. Because... It's our mandate and responsibility to give life and energy and more importantly, time for those things that are ready to die. It's your mandate. If your marriage is ready to die, give time to it. If your children are ready to, I mean, if you're forsaking them, I mean, give time. It's very important. According to our theme text, this has nothing to do with the devil this time around, but with us, our dead works. Okay, our did because he says, For I have not found your works perfect before God. That's what he says, Jesus Christ. So it's wise then for us to know the kind of works that meet God's requirement if we are to keep alive those things. Very important. And that's wisdom. Because those things which remain could be a relationship, like I said, your service to God, your ministry, and many more. Okay. Maybe your marriage or relationship is on a verge of death. This bread is for you. You understand? You may have to evaluate the way you're doing things in your life, especially in that marriage or that relationship or in that ministry and career. Okay, now listen. Anything you do that is perfect in the sight of God is one that springs forth from your complete obedience and trust to God and not your good efforts or intellect. I hope I make sense. But anything you do that springs forth from, that comes from your trust and not your effort, hallelujah, is a work that is perfect in the sight of God. There are those who do because they are, have great intellect, they have great abilities, and they think it is their abilities that have sustained their marriage or their, their relationship or their business. God is saying, if you do that, begin to strengthen the things because they are about to die. You can't keep them by your effort. You can't sustain them by your effort, but by the grace of God, because everything that comes to us comes by grace. Whatever is of God, if your marriage is of God, it can only come by grace. If, you, if victory, if success is of God, it can only come to you by grace. And so we must understand how to work towards that which God has given us. So this thing of the work, springing forth from out of your obedience and trust in God. It's a work inspired either by God's love for you or God's love in you. Because you're inspired by God, you do what you're doing. Because God's love is in you, you're doing what you're doing. You're compelled by that love for you or that love in you. Okay? But anything we do out of our own effort and good works is a dead work which Christ is trying to want, uh, which Christ is addressing or else there are things that are ready to die because of the way you do things. Am I really making sense? So friends, the person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him. Okay? To such a one, doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God does for you. Are you, love, are you, are you cooking for that husband because you want to be loved or you're cooking for that husband because you are loved? Are you seeing it? If you're cooking because you want to be loved, strengthen that marriage because it's going to die. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I, am I really making sense? So are you doing things to be loved 
Or are you doing things because you are loved? If you not, let me tell you something. It is going to die. Strengthen it. Go back and learn to do from the place of I am loved. That's why I do whatever I have to do. Adrian preaches the gospel. I do your bread of life every day not to be loved, not to receive eternal life, but as a gratitude for what God has given me, the gift of eternal life. And so I preach every day out of my gratitude and say, Lord, I thank you for this eternal life that you've given me. With such a ministry and with such attitude, there is no way my life, things around me can die because I have the right perspective. Am I really making sense? So, you don't have to be loved by God, okay? On the contrary, how can I say, let me go back. To such a one doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God has done for you. They don't, they don't do to be loved by God or people. On the contrary, they do because they are loved by God. So you don't do things because you want to be loved by people or you are loved by people. You do things because you are loved by God. And that's an important thing. Are you inspired by God's love for you? or God's love for you, or God's love in you, or you are inspired by men's approval of you. If you're inspired by men's approval, strengthen those things that are about to die. But if you're inspired by God's love for you, let me tell you something, you're going to leave. Everything you do is going to uh, go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. So with this divine thought and order of doing things, what comes out of you is life that permeates everything you do, you think, and say. And if that word permeates everything, I can guarantee one thing, that oh, 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 the best is yet to come. And God bless you.